Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Benavides and today's topic is evidence from, evidence from camel to human transmission of MERS coronavirus. Definition. The isolation and sequencing of Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus, MERS-CoV, obtained from dromedary camel and from a patient who died from of laboratory confirmed mers covid infection after close contact with camels that had rhinorrhea. Nasal swabs collected from the patient and one of his nine camels were positive for mers -CoV. The full genome sequen sequences of the two isolated were identical. Serological data indicates that mers -CoV was circulating in the camels but not in the patient before the human infection occurs. This data suggests that this fatal case of human mers -CoV infection was transmitted to hold close contact with an infected camel. Here's a video about this topic. MERS is a disease caused by the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus, or MERS-CoV as it is commonly referred to. Although the full name is quite long, it actually says a lot about the virus. Firstly, the disease was first reported from Saudi Arabia, a country in the Middle East, in 2012. It causes a respiratory syndrome, which means that it can cause a range of respiratory symptoms. Thirdly, it is a type of virus called a coronavirus. So what is a coronavirus? Coronaviruses are a large group of viruses. They can cause a range of diseases in humans and animals, ranging from the common cold to diseases like SARS or MERS, which cause serious illness. The viruses are made up of a core of genetic material surrounded by an envelope, which has little protein spikes. This gives it the appearance of a crown. Crown in Latin is called corona, from which the viruses get their name. Let's have a look at MERS-CoV. Since its discovery in 2012, there have been about 1,180 cases and 483 deaths from MERS-CoV reported by the end of May 2015. All MERS cases have been linked to countries that are in or around the Middle East, either in those who have lived or traveled to those countries or those who have had close contact with someone who is sick with MERS. There was an outbreak of MERS-CoV in South Korea triggered by a traveler from the Middle East. The outbreak was associated with healthcare facilities and between May and July 2015, there were over 180 cases reported. No one is entirely sure where the virus comes from, but the likely source is camels. This is because evidence of MERS-CoV infection has been found in camels and also that some people with MERS have reported contact with camels before they got sick. The role of bats in MERS infections is still being investigated. The virus is passed from person to person where there is close contact, but is not thought to be highly infectious. Transmission of the virus has occurred among family members and in healthcare settings where it has spread to healthcare staff and other patients. It is likely to be passed from person to person through the air or through direct contact. Once the virus infects a person, it can take between 2 to 14 days for symptoms to start. What are the symptoms? Well, it could range from having no symptoms at all to having severe respiratory illness leading to death. Symptoms typically include a fever, cough, sore throat, muscle and joint pain, and shortness of breath. Other symptoms may include diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. People
application in medicine. MERS-CoV-2 is a newly identified human coronavirus that has recently emerged in the Middle East region. Current epidemiologic data suggests multiple zoonotic transmission from an animal reservoir, leading to human infection, sometimes with secondary transmission even events in humans. The study describes reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction RT-PCR detection, isolation, and sequencing mers cov from a camel and from a patient who died of laboratory confirmed mers cov infection in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Here's another video. MERS-CoV, or Middle East Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus, is the latest little-known virus to be making headlines globally. Symptoms include fever, cough, and shortness of breath. For many, those symptoms are followed by more severe complications, such as pneumonia and kidney failure. The World Health Organization estimates that 36% of infected patients have died from MERS. The first confirmed case was reported in Saudi Arabia in 2012. Contact with camels is believed to be the source of many human infections. Since then, cases have been reported in over 20 countries, including the U.S., Europe, Asia, and Africa. More than 1,200 people have been infected, of which more than 440 have died, with the vast majority of those deaths occurring in Saudi Arabia. Recently, MERS has infected close to 100 people in South Korea, with nearly 3,000 people in quarantine. However, that large number is primarily attributed to poor infection control within hospitals. Further spread of the virus could take a toll on South Korea's economy, the way SARS did throughout Asia a decade ago. Most at risk is the tourism industry, which accounts for 5.8% of the country's economic output. In fact, the Korea Tourism Organization reported about 25,000 people had already canceled trips to South Korea this month. Here is another video. MERS stands for Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and is caused by the MERS coronavirus, which makes its first debut in 2012 in the Arabian Peninsula. It is believed to have originated from camels as the primary reservoir. being a respiratory virus spreads through aerosol droplets or close contact with infected individuals. The incubation period ranges anything from 2 to 14 days. The symptoms of MERS ranges from fever, myalgia or body aches, cough, runny nose, sneezing, and sometimes abdominal pain, diarrhea, and vomiting. Complications of MERS would be things like pneumonia, liver, or kidney failure, and in the rare case, disseminated intravascular coagulopathy that is clots in the blood system or fatality death. There is currently no cure for MERS, and so prevention is the best measure. Say to wear a mask if you're unwell and pay attention to hand hygiene and hand washing. Of course, if you can, do not travel to endemic areas. But should you need to travel and uh, you are sick upon returning two weeks from the uh, place, then please see a doctor as soon as possible. Here's some tips to help you stay healthy and keep the flu bug away. Have your daily dose of vitamin C, eat well, sleep well, exercise regularly, stay well hydrated. And I suppose those who are at risk, um, such as people who are above the age of 65, pregnant ladies, young children, and those with cardiorespiratory illnesses should have your flu vaccine updated and do consider the pneumococcal vaccination. Now, pros and cons. 
and spread between humans typically requires close contact with an infected person. It is, it is spreads, it spread is uncommon outside of hospitals. Thus, its risk to the global population is currently deemed to be a fairly low. Con. There are no treatment available for mers copy in animals. However, research for commercially licensed, licensed vaccines is underway to develop and assess potential intervention measures targeted at dromedary camels to prevent transmission of mers copy among dromedary camels and from dromedary camels to humans. Here's the last meeting. V emerged in the Arabian Peninsula in 2012. Since then, it has sickened more than 1,000 people, killing approximately 30% of those it infects. My group is interested in understanding how new viruses emerge. So whenever something new pops up into the human population, either from a wildlife reservoir or a domestic animal reservoir, we're immediately very interested. Dr. Vincent Munster and his colleagues at the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases were among the first groups to begin studying MERS. We showed that this virus targets the lower respiratory tract, so it efficiently replicates in the cells lining the lungs, and that's how it causes disease. Their latest study provides experimental evidence that camels are the primary source of transmission of the virus. The identification of dromedary camels as the reservoir for MERS COV is an extremely important finding and allows us to target who and what people are at risk for contracting MERS COV. This virus is predominantly shed from the upper respiratory tract of dromedary camels. This indicates that direct contact or maybe even aerosol transmission from camels to humans is a potential route of transmission. That said, a fair amount of human cases have been reported who did not have any direct contact with dromedary camels. This suggests that there might be alternative routes of transmission, either via contact of humans with animal handlers or maybe via food products. Dr. Munster and his team theorized that vaccinating camels may be a way to prevent the virus from infecting people. What is different with mers -CoV is that it's a dromedary camel virus. So it it's not circulating in the human population, but in dromedary camels. So in order to stop disease in humans, you actually have to stop the circulation in camels. I think the first thing we need to do is provide a proof of principle that, for instance, vaccination of dromedary camels will actually stop infection and circulation of mers -CoV in dromedary camels. In terms of helpful treatments for people with MERS infection, the researchers are testing drugs already licensed for use. We started looking at what we call animal modeling, trying to see if we can mimic disease, what we see in humans in an animal model, so we can actually start looking at countermeasures and see whether they're effective. I think the most promising strategy right now is repurposing of existing drugs, and that's actually one of the first experiments we did, where we took a combination between interferon and ribavirin and looked at the effects on mers -CoV replication in our animal models, and it actually looked really good. Although whether it would be effective in humans still remains to be investigated. Scientists have compared MERS to severe acute respiratory syndrome or SARS, a similar and deadly coronavirus that emerged about 10 years before MERS, swept across the globe, and then disappeared within about a year. Because MERS has at least a two decade history of thriving in camels, researchers think it is here to stay, though its long term risk to people is an unknown. Issue applied in Ecuador. Unlike what happened with SARS CoV 2, the MERS was controlled better, and therefore it, did, it didn't happen to be several outbreaks around it in some certain areas, but it, it did not become a pandemic. Therefore, there is no data in Ecuador about that virus. Conclusion. In conclusion, this data suggests that MERS-CoV 
psychosis as a nautic infection that can that can infect dromedary camels and can be transmitted from them to human through half close contact. This data also suggests that the camels were transient, transient, transiently, transiently infected since the virus seemed to be clear after the acute sin infection. Camels may act as in, intermediate host that transmit the virus from the reserve for its reservoirs to humans. The exact reservoir that maintains the virus and its ecological niche has yet not been identified. Thanks for everything and follow me in my social media accounts and thank you for your attention.